So uh, the machine itself has been um, made out of uh, bits of farm machinery that I had laying around. And um, it is a farm sprayer with a couple of uh, bale elevators on it and some bits of metal that I had laying around um, with a heck of a lot of hydraulic parts from Princess Auto in Winnipeg, which is the equivalent, I believe, of a fleet farm in, in the US. So the whole uh, thing is run by a farm tractor. Um, the farm tractor runs a hydraulic pump and the hydraulic pump runs the splitter itself. Um, I've got a 20 gallon tank uh, on the splitter and a 20 gallon pump on the tractor. Ideally, you should have a, a tank that's twice as big as the capacity of the pump. Um, otherwise, you start generating heat. I'm not generating heat at the moment, mostly because I work in cold weather, very cold weather. On the output side of the tractor, I've got uh, two hydraulic outputs. One of them lifts the, the uh, log table up so I can uh, transport it down the road. And the other hydraulic unit uh, operates the, the uh, log loader that chucks everything in the trailer. I gave careful consideration to putting a hydraulic um, chainsaw on this thing. The advantage is that it's nice and quiet. Um, the disadvantage is I've got to lay out some more money. This is the um, saw that I use to fell the trees. And so at the moment it's working dual purpose, which I like. You need the thing to be somewhat controlled in amongst the machinery. And consequently to, to that end, uh, I wanted to be able to put it on here with minimal um, uh, changes to the saw itself. And basically the saw is still exactly standard. And what I've done is put a pin on here, put a tube on here and a square piece of metal. And the important part here is an offset that I bought from Logosaw. And basically they tighten up against the chain guard and they keep the chain and everything in place exactly as these nuts did once upon a time. I put this over the top, tighten it down, and now with a couple of stops at each end, it can't go too far back, it can't go too far forward, which works for me. And I don't have to hold the saw up or worry about chopping up my log splitter. So I like the people at Logosol. They actually make um, uh, Alaskan chainsaws, which is kind of nice. I'm working with uh, ash as a firewood. It burns beautifully, uh, but it doesn't grow very straight. And you'll find that practically everybody on YouTube are uh, showing how wonderful their equipment is uh, when they're working with um, pine, which essentially uh, they're playing with uh, very large pencils. When it starts getting curvy and kinky and it's got bumps and stuff on it, I find that my day is very diff different to theirs. And um, uh, trying to feed stuff through this machine that is not quite straight is, uh, is exciting. Each winter I take it into the shop and I improve it slightly. Um, I started out with um, a single big knife with this angle iron right here on each side. And the logic was that it would stiffen the knife a little bit in, in, in this direction and uh, uh, improve the amount of uh, split that I got. The cross wedge, the original one, was straight. And what was happening was the logs occasionally would hit the straight cross wedge and just come straight out through the sides. They wouldn't be split, it would just go sideways. So what I've done is made the cross wedge angled. So it's something like this, so that when they hit it, it's square. Uh, huge improvement, but I don't think I need this at all. This is just a waste of, of effort. I've, I've done such a good job of putting it in. I really don't want to take it out right now. What I did then, worried about the amount of, of um, uh, stress on everything, was to put a foot on the back of the cross wedge 
and, and let it hit this, and this would take some of the side load. I'm not sure that that is necessary. What has happened though is because I've got a straight or a flat edge here and here, every now and then I'll get one come through, twist, and come straight through this. And with 26 tons behind it, it expands it. And if you look carefully, you can see the surgery that's been done to put it back together. So this winter I have other ideas for it, but to have a flat corner like this in the crush bed, not a good plan. Not a good plan at all. Um, the speed of these things uh, really matters. Um, the faster they go, the more dangerous they become and the quicker you can break things um, and the stronger they gotta be. The slower they go, the longer it takes you to do a job. And if you've got a decent sized stack of wood, uh, seems to me that faster is better. Um, I've got a 25 ton cylinder on this thing. And there are times when uh, ash, uh, it struggles to break it. If you're working with pine and things like that, you can get away with a much um, lower tonnage. But a lower tonnage gives you a much smaller cylinder and much less oil going into it and a much faster cycle time. So some of the commercial ones will run about a four second cycle time, uh, and, uh, uh, but their tonnage is not there. I have to go a little slower. I don't think that's a really bad thing. I've just got to be patient. What I can do is to uh, increase the speed of my tractor. Of course, then I'm burning more fuel. Um, my tractor is running at a high idle right now. And at a gallon an hour, I can afford to do this. The inlet table is set just a little bit up on this side. And the result is it's relatively easy to run the logs down the slope. It would be nice to have it power fed. Um, I just haven't got that far yet. Now, on the straight ones, uh, the system that I've got for my infeed uh, um, conveyor is pretty good. It's a number 80 chain with lumps on it. Ideally, I need little wings on them and the wings will grab them better. And the problem is you've got to return that chain and I'm very close to my cylinder right now and therefore I don't have the height to do what I want to do. I can lift the whole thing, but th that's, that's next winter's job. The thing is cam automatic or semi-automatic anyway. And what happens is when I pull the lever here, it opens up the valve that operates the cylinder and the valve is way underneath and it go the um, uh, a sled comes out the ram comes out and catches on this rod and pulls it back again and when it pulls it back the thing retracts so i just hit it once and it does a complete cycle and the cam right here is the important part of the whole thing so when it goes down, it catches in that cam and the cylinder extends. When this rod is hit by the sled, it does that and the whole thing retracts and goes back to a neutral position. And the sled hits a kick out in here, right there. And the kick out puts it into a neutral position. Now you can do this hydraulically. There's a, a, a company that makes a valve that allows you to do this. I think it's about a $400 thing. I managed to do it with a bunch of levers. Uh, I've cheated a little bit with the pump. This is a 540, 20 gallon a minute pump. That's good for just over 2000 PSI. To get 540 RPM out of the tractor, I've got to have it running at a pretty good speed. So what I've done is put a thousand PTO adapter on it change the spline so this thing now at idle on the tractor I'm getting my 540 here the output to the uh, pump comes in here this is a splitter and one side goes to the uh, um, crush cylinder and the other one does everything else I've got a little clamp um, I can adjust the height of my wedge 
and of course I drive this with it too. Um, and I can adjust this a little bit one way or the other to increase the speed of the crush um, or I can speed up my tractor a little bit. I got options here. Uh, this is where I was saying that these are okay but if you're working with kinky wood you want a, a plate across there so that you've actually got a paddle hitting this but I'm so close to my cylinder at the moment I got to do a lot of work to change that. My bale elevator uh, plugs up here routinely um, and I think a belt would be a better way of doing it uh, with uh, slats on it um, or a piece of material across here on each one and again it's got to be brought back with a little bit of care and grace. So uh, one of the problems I found with a wood splitter is that uh, I'm getting a little older now and I can no longer pick up six and eight hundred pound logs and consequently feeling a little lazy I bought myself what used to be a long while ago a semi-tractor I got it at an auction I was fortunate I got rather a good deal on it uh, but it had a sand spreader on it so I took the sand spreader off and I managed to get this big crane from uh, an, an auction in Alberta and loaded the crane uh, onto here. Um, I was rather fortunate. I got a neighbor who operates a crane for a living. So he was able to put this on here. It weighs better part of three tons. And having put it on, I found that I couldn't put the feet down. This is important. And if you can't put the feet down, you can't stabilize it. So what I had to do was to build this frame here. And once I put that frame in, I lifted the whole thing up high enough that it would work and bolted it down pretty securely. Put a cover over the back so that uh, uh, bits of sticks and, and bark and junk didn't get into the air system for the brakes. And I was beginning to go in the right direction. It took me a while to find this. I bought the crane without the grapple. And this is the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. This is a Super Grip 360, which I'm a little proud of. It came from an industrial forest operator and he was upgrading to a new one. So I've got his cast off. And it came with uh, an indexator. And what that thing does is spins the whole thing around endlessly, which is really good because I can go into my stack, grab what I want, spin it and put it down over there and by moving a couple of controls I can move half a ton of wood if I want to and the heart of the whole machine is the pump on the front and uh, there are two ways of controlling a pump on the front uh, this one when you start the engine it's direct drive constantly and consequently I've got an air system here that limits the amount of oil going into it for when you're going down the highway Otherwise, you create enough flow that uh, something's going to break. So you limit the amount of flow going in, just enough to lubricate it. And then when you want the crane to run, you apply a switch in the cab, the air comes on, and this thing starts pumping all kinds of oil to run the crane. The other way to do it is, is to have an air clutch. I don't have one of them, but uh, if you have an air clutch on it, then um, when you're going down the highway, the pump's not turning at all. Which is, which is nice. 